Hi, my name is Shannon Lee Watkins. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the Center for Tobacco Control Research and Education at UCSF, the University of California, San Francisco. Today I am presenting preliminary work using a big longitudinal data set of tobacco use behavior, and I am looking at flavored tobacco initiation. We have a puzzling sort of challenge to tackle now. As we see overall cigarette smoking prevalence decrease, we see an increase of these alternative tobacco products like e-cigarettes, little cigars, and hookah. And while cigarettes are no longer allowed to be flavored other than menthol, all of these other products can still be flavored. So there are a couple of questions here. The first is whether the emergence of these other products is diverting youth from using cigarettes or encouraging them to use cigarettes. And then the second is whether the flavor nature of these products is getting those kids that wouldn't have otherwise taken a risky behavior sort of gotten over the threshold to use those products and then whether they leave, of course, onto cigarette smoking or to use of these tobacco products which have their own health risks. So what I'm presenting today is a preliminary tackle at describing flavored tobacco users as the first goal. We have a lot of understanding about disparities in menthol tobacco use related to or as a result of intentional tobacco industry targeting of African American communities and other communities with menthol cigarettes. So we see higher menthol use among women, LGBT folks, and people of color in a very, very variety of communities. We don't know much actually about the patterns of flavored tobacco use in other products um, and non-menthol. So what I find in this first tech um, Using regression models controlling for um, a bunch of demographic characteristics, we find significant differences across most products for women and people of color, although a couple of products like smokeless tobacco have an inverse relationship in urban environments where we're talking about these populations, like um, when we're talking about flavor bans, for example, happening in San Francisco, the, the folks that are using them are not prevalence of smokeless is not very high. So the policy implication from this is that as we see the emergence of flavored tobacco bans in California, in Rhode Island, etc., that they might affect these marginalized groups, people of color, we might also see some impacts on women who are initiating smoking. The second um, aim of this poster is to look at whether flavored tobacco initiation predicts future cigarette use. And while in other research I find that flavored tobacco initiation of a product predicts current use of that particular product, here, for now, we see that starting with menthol cigarettes, for example, predicts current cigarette use. Um, and the other relationships are inverse, but I think because we can't quite identify the self-selection process of flavors, that this is not a causal statement. It might actually be capturing folks that started with cigarettes, then went on to use e-cigarettes, and of course they're less likely to start with flavors because they're already using cigarettes. So teasing out this puzzle is where I'm headed, and I'm going to be using this really fascinating longitudinal data set to do so.